Today I'm going to be showing you a type of graph called a parabola or a quadratic. Here we have y equals x squared which is the easiest parabola that you can see. Before I show you what this graph looks like, let's pick a couple of x values and see what y values we get. So if I chose an x value of negative 2 and I put it into my graph, that would give us negative 2 squared which is equal to positive 4. Then if I chose an x value like 0, that would give me 0 squared, which is going to be equal to 0. Then if I chose 1 and I put it into here, that would give us 1 squared, which is equal to 1. If I chose 2, that would give us 2 squared, which is 4. And if I chose 3, that would give me 3 squared, which is 9. So you can see how we have a set of coordinates here. Negative 2, 4, 0, 0. 1 comma 1, 2 comma 4, and 3 comma 9. So now what I'm going to do is get the points that we just found and plot them on this Cartesian plane. So you can see I've plotted 1, 1, 2, 4, 3, 9, and I'll plot negative 2, 4, and 0, 0 as well. And if you did this with every single x value that you knew and drew a line through all of them, it would trace this parabola that you can see here. Now that you know what our basic y equals x squared parabola looks like, I'm going to show you the general form of every single parabola that you'll see. So what's important to know here is that we have a, which is the coefficient of x squared, so the number in front of it, then b, which is the number in front of the x, and c, which is the constant at the end, or the lone number that you add at the end of the parabola. Now, these letters might be hidden in some quadratics because they may equal 0 or they may equal 1. I'll use the example from before, our easy y equals x squared, to show you what they would equal here. So in this question, we need to look at what's the number in front of our x squared. So looking at our x squared, we can see that the number in front of it is going to be equal to 1. Then looking at our x term, there's no x term. So that you could imagine is a 0 times x. So our b is equal to 0. Then looking at our constant term, there's also no constant being added, so you can imagine it like a 0 being added. So c is equal to 0. Now what if I gave you an example like this, where y equals x squared plus 2x and take away 3. Well looking at this again, our a would, would equal 1 because there's no number there. Our b would equal plus 2 because that's the coefficient of x. And our constant at the end would equal negative 3. I'm going to show you how we can completely go from not knowing how to draw this graph at all to being able to draw this graph labeling every single important point. So before I get into showing you how to do that, I need to show you what the important points are. So first off, we have these two points here. These are called x-intercepts. And that's just when our graph crosses the blue x-axis. Then we have our y-intercept. And that's just when our graph crosses the red y-axis. We also have this point here called our turning point. And that's because our graph turns at that point. So I'm going to show you how we can find all of these points now so you can draw this graph as well. First, let's start with the y-intercept. The way you find the y-intercept for any graph is by making x equals 0. So when x equals 0, you can see how our graph becomes y equals 0 squared plus 2 times 0 minus 3, which means overall our y-intercept is equal to negative 3. So our y-intercept has a coordinate of 0, negative 3. There are many ways of finding the turning point of a parabola, but first I'm going to show you an easy way to do it, and then you can learn the other ways later. So we're going to be using something called the axis of symmetry. And what that is, is as you can see here, 
we can cut our parabola into half right at this point. And you can see how our parabola is symmetrical on either side. So that's why that's called the axis of symmetry. And what you can see is that this line lines up with our turning point here, and that is the x value. And the axis of symmetry is given by this. So our x value at that axis of symmetry is equal to negative b over 2a. And I hope you can remember from before what a, b, and c was for our general parabola. So we looked at this as an example before, and we said that our a was equal to 1 because there's a 1 there. We said that our b was equal to 2 because of this, and we said our c was equal to negative 3 because of this. So using these values, you can see how our axis of symmetry is located at negative 2 over 2 times 1. And you can see how that gives us negative 1. So we know our x value of our turning point is at negative 1. So x equals negative 1 is the x value. Now, how do you get the y value of this turning point so we can get the full coordinate? Well, you just substitute this x back into our equation here. So let's do that now. So our y value at our turning point is going to be equal to negative 1 squared plus 2 times negative 1 minus 3. Now negative 1 squared is equal to positive 1. Positive 2 times negative 1 is negative 2 and we have negative 3 here. 1 minus 2 is negative 1 minus 3 is negative 4. So you can see how our y value at our turning point is negative 4. So overall, our turning point's coordinate is negative 1, negative 4. What I'm now going to show you is how to find the x-intercepts. I hope everyone remembers that in order to find an x-intercept, it's when y equals 0. So for any graph, you always set y equals 0 to find the x-intercepts. So if we did that with this graph, we would get this equation that we now have to solve. Now, the problem with this is it's not a linear equation, so we can't easily rearrange this and solve for x. So what we need to do is learn how to factorize this. And what I mean by factorize is to get it into these nice brackets like this. And you can see that if we were to expand this, we would get this again. So I can show you that here, this times this, this times this, three times x, and then three times negative one. So you can see how when we combine that, we get the graph that we're working with here. So I'm going to show you how to get it into this form first. So what you're meant to do is, you need to think of two numbers that times together to give you the C at the end. So two numbers that times together to give you negative three. And those two same numbers have to add up to give you positive 2, so the number in front of the x. And when we think about it, we can think that the two numbers are going to be 3 and negative 1. So you can see when you times them together, you get negative 3. And when you add them together, you get 2. So once we have these two important numbers, what we can do is just write it as our factorized form. So you can see how all I write now is our x's here, and then whatever this number is, so this is plus 3, and then whatever this number is, so this is minus 1. And that is the same thing as what we have here. We've just factorized it nicely. Now there's a concept called the null factor law. And what that means is, when you have two brackets like this, either one of them can equal zero in order to get zero as your answer. So think of that logically, right? Even if this bracket equaled 50, if this one equals zero, then the whole thing is going to be equal to zero. Okay, so what that means is we can basically say, well, we can make the first bracket equal zero in order for this equation to work. So we can say the first one zero. And by minusing this three from both sides, you can see how x is equal to negative three. Or we can say that our other bracket is equal to zero as well. Because either one can equal zero in order for this entire thing to equal zero. So when we add one to both sides, 
you can see how we get x is equal to 1. So why is this good? Because now we have our x-intercepts. So this one here is negative 3 comma 0 and this one is 1 comma 0. Now that we have all of our important points here including our y-intercept, our turning point and our x-intercepts, I can show you how we can plot these on a Cartesian plane and then draw our parabola. So now that we have all of our points, we can plot them nicely on our Cartesian plane. So we can plot our x-intercepts 1, 1, negative 3, y-intercept 0, negative 3, and our turning point negative 1, negative 4. And you can see how we can trace our parabola through our first x-intercept into our turning point, and then our y-intercept, and then finish it off by going through our last x-intercept, and here we have our parabola. I hope you can draw your first parabola now. Please watch my transformations video if you want to learn how we can flip this parabola across the y-axis, make it go upside down, how we can move it left and right, up and down, and how we can stretch it as well.